Tony? Well, Joe, just before Teddy McCarthy received that injury, the club <coughs> selectors were thinking of changing him anyway, not taking him off the field, but switching him perhaps with Barry Egan, talking as well about switching the wing forwards. They are concerned about Limerick's dominance, obviously, but the wind factor, they say, isn't as much in Cork's favour as they had hoped in the first half, because the wind is swirling across the field at this stage. OK, Tony, thank you for that. Yes, it's very difficult to judge from time to time here about the swirling breeze. Mark Mullins and Barry Egan have indeed been switched as we watch Teddy get bandaged up. It looked nasty, and they'll carry out some running repairs, I'm sure, at half-time. Just looking around the positioning here, and Brian Corcoran is still playing on the 40, playing on Kieran Carey. And the midfield is Charlie McCarthy, and I presume Teddy McCarthy, although Tony O'Donoghue was saying they were considering a positional switch for him. <coughs> well, the bandaged hero comes back in. We lost about a minute there through that injury. Teddy's gone back into midfield where he's marking Sean O'Neill. They who accidentally clashed with him that time. Over the head of Brian Corcoran's on towards Kevin Murray. Murray yet to make a big impression in this match. Instead, it's Kieran Carey. Very solid at centre half back. Part of a very good half back line. Shawnee McCarthy. Opening it across towards Joe Dean, had a chance in the very first attack. Here he's beaten by Steve McDonough. One hand, it didn't go away for him. Dean sticking to his task. He's got a man to his left. That's Barry Egan, who's just been switched there. Dean going straight through, chased by McDonough. One back by McDonough. Comes across towards Mark Bollins. Didn't really take it up well. Barry Egan looking at the target. Angling one in, but he's put it wide. And Joe Quaid saying to his defenders, Well done. You made life awkward. You stuck to your task well. And the shot went wide. Seven wides for Cork. And news of a substitution, Tony. Well, not quite yet, Ger, but uh, Sean O'Gahalpin is ready to come into the fray. They thought Teddy McCarthy wouldn't be good enough to continue. He's been bandaged up, as you can see. Sean O'Gahalpin ready to make his championship debut. Yes, he's a very interesting character, Sean O'Gahalpin. Son of a Fijian mother and a father who hails from Fermanagh. And I don't know the full family history, but I think they may have... Uh, Settled down in Mary, possibly in Australia, but moved to Cork. And I think hurling is one of the attractions. Here's Mike Nash. Blocked down by Alan Brown. A full brother blocked down that time. Joe Dean trying to get it inside. That's Mark Mullins. And a great save by Joe Gray. And it just about trickles for a 65. And that was Cork's first real chance to threaten this man's goal. That was a super save, he was down so quickly, and what a good chance. Well, great work from Alan Brown, first of all, uh, Mike Nash had the ball, he blocked him down, he blocked him down second, he flicked it across, a good shot from Mark Mullins, but a really great save from Joel Quaid. I tell you, we're seeing some great individual performances on both sides, but in particular Limerick, it has to be said, who lead, as you see, by four points. And it's Mike Nash who's the latest one to receive an injury. So now the 65 will be taken by Jim Cashman. Cork needing a score. Can Jim supply it? And the answer in the affirmative. The centre-half back was played a cornerback last year in the championship against Sherlock Nance team. I think much happier at centre-half. Seven points to four the position. Well, they had quite a battle, of course, when the teams met two years ago. I think on points, Gary Kirby came out on top that day. But Jim Cashman doing really well in this match. Joe Quaid's puck out. Sean O'Neill and Teddy McCarthy under it. Stalemate. Here's picked up by Kieran McGuckin. McGuckin from Glen Rovers. Mike Galligan. Really going nowhere. Barry Egan. Cork now trying to dig deep, trying to find something in the final six, seven minutes of the half. Declan Nash taking it away from Kevin Murray. Nash having the pace and having the dash and finally taking a tumble over the outstretched legs there of Mark Mullins. Cork's captain this afternoon, the only member of the Piershik in the starting 15, although Sean O'Gohan P, if he comes on, would be another. Mark Foley taking the free over the head of Damien Quigley on towards Podge Tobin. Won here by a ruggedly determined fullback, John O'Driscoll. Brian Corkin watching the fly part of the ball. It's brilliantly caught there by Dave Clark. Not the longest of clearances, but an effective one as far as Mike Coolahan. 
Over towards Owen O'Neill. Fergal Ryan getting there first. Out towards Shawnee McCarthy. It runs on to Teddy. The man they call Teddy Mack plants it into the square. In towards Alan Brown. Great catch by Brown. And that's not the top for the turn over the bar. Alan Brown's first scoring chance. He made the most of it. And the Cork fans will believe they're still in there in a very meaningful way. Only two points separating the teams. Well, this is more like it from Cork. A good ball in from Teddy McCarthy. Of course, Alan Brown, very good under the high ball. And once he catches it, he loses Mike Nash. And one tap is over the bar. Cork needed that score. They're back in the game again. It's still anybody's game. So just a little over five minutes to go to the break. McGuckin and his match coming live from Porky Creeve this afternoon, the start of the Guinness Hurling Championship. Mark Foley. Good clearance into the inside forward line. This time it's won by Timmy Keller, keeping a cool head. McGuckin is blocked down by Damian Quigley. Head down, full of determination, the hand pass to pick up Mike Gallagher. First touch wasn't good, but he recovers well. Sells the dummy then to Kieran McGuckin, crossing the 45 metre line. Oh dear. Now, the grin on his face, I think, tells it all. And there were groans from the Limerick fans. There's an injury to Damon, Damien Quigley there. Just after he laid that ball off towards Mike Galligan. And not the first wide for Limerick in the half, when really he had a glorious chance of going for a score. Well, very unusual for Mike Galligan to miss a chance like this, but... Uh... Even the best of players can miss, but uh, Limerick does still have the upper hand on Cork. And coming up to half time, I think Limerick will be very, very happy with the position they're in. They certainly seem to be. Tim Hartigan there and Tom Ryan, Liam Lenehan, and the other selectors as well. The other selectors being Bernie Savage. They'll be very pleased. They played against the wind. Okay, we heard that it's a swirling breeze. But psychologically, it'll give Limerick a huge edge. Oh, here's Alan Brown. Yes. Okay. shown in the past and he can get goals he's pushed Cork in front well you ask anybody about Alan Brown the first thing they say he'd always score goals and here he is gets the ball rounds his man and kicks the ball to net he just had that finishing touch like a good striker in soccer a great goal from Alan Brown and now we have a real game in our hands and it started at the other end with Jer Cunningham locating Kieran McGuckin and a long long ball after all of that and now the questions to be asked of Limerick suddenly Cork have found renewed zest They've found their confidence as well. Brian Corcoran in towards Kevin Murray. He's also a proven goal-getter. Oh, that's a poor shot, though. More or less mirroring the miss by Mike Gallagher at the opposite end. And the hand injury picked up for his troubles. Jimmy Barry Murphy was out by the side of the pitch there to roll a bit of encouragement on to the forwards. Just need a replacement slitter, that's the reason for the delay. So Jimmy going back onto the bench once again. Cork had 16 scoring chances, they've taken six. Limerick had 12 scoring chances, they've taken seven. And that tells you that Cork certainly have been getting into good positions, but haven't been availing of them in the same manner that Limerick had. That looks to me like uh, TJ Ryan of Gary Spillan. Of course, in the All-Ireland Final, he's a corner forward. He could come in and do a very good job indeed. It was probably a big disappointment for him that he's out in the first place. Tony, have you got some more news? Yes, he's been warmed up as a precaution. I know it's coming up to half-time, but Damien Quigley is very doubtful now for Limerick. So TJ, ready to enter the fray. saying to the two players in front of Declan Nash, Jerome Carey and Kevin Murray, back you come guys. Heading towards the final minute and a half down of the first half. Limerick were seen to be the better team, but Cork have come back strongly. Mike Gallagher, great run, leaving it behind him. Two men going in, a shoulder from Kieran McGuckin, he didn't step over the line. 
dropped in. Missed by Fergal Rawhead. The shot there by Shane O'Neill. And another wonderful save by Jack Cunningham. Out he is again to challenge the Limerick number 10 O'Neill. From the Lapirchings in Limerick. A cross goal it goes towards Gary Kirby. Well, another wonderful save by the netminder from St. Finbars. Back to Damien Quigley. Hampered by the injury. I'm not sure if that was a factor or not, but uh, he missed another good chance. Well, Damien Quigley seems to have a real problem with his right hand. I think there must be something really bad with it, otherwise he'd have put that ball over the bar. He seems to be holding it all the time. Confirmation of a substitution right on the call of half time, and it's going to be TJ Ryan who's going to come in. And the man going off, Damien Quigley. So a corner forward for a corner forward, but Quigley is a big loss. He's a potential match winner at any stage. Puck out's been taken over the head of Kiran Carey. Mark Foley's back there helping his centre half back. Barry Egan tried to get it in. Brian Corcoran, full of determination, it's swept away from him by Sean O'Neill, O'Neill the midfielder, the shoulder there from Joe Dean, one of the smallest men on the field, and he must have got over the sideline with it because it's a Limerick ball. He really hit the Limerick man well. So now, well and truly into injury time, confirmation of the substitution before the break. Dave Clark sideline caught up towards Shane O'Neill. He's fouled by Fergal McCormack. Free to Limerick. Cork with a slight edge, but also the breeze. Mike Coolman is the free taker. Great ball towards TJ Ryan. Appeals all around in the end, the umpire, which I thought about to wave it wide, and then he said, no, it's a 65. So a late opportunity then for Limerick. It's now down to the referee to decide how much time he's going to add on, because we're well and truly into injury time, the injury to Teddy McCarthy in the first half. And if you join us late, Teddy had a head injury, but he's playing on. It's Gary Kirby to take the 65. Cork leading by a point. Oh, no. Dropped in low. Again, Jerry Cunningham called on to make a save. Good control there, out as far as Timmy Kelleher. Jerry Cunningham, one of the stars for Cork in the first half. Mark Foley, one of the stars for Limerick, has uh, brushed aside there. Down towards Kevin Murray it goes. Mark Mullins is coming in now, the Cork captain, skipping away from Kieran Carey. Here's danger, and that's gone wide. It seems from this angle here as though it was starting to go over the bar, but then it curled away. And Cork with a ninth wide, far too many wides. Too many wides, that was a great opportunity for Mark Mullins, and especially when Barry Egan was coming in just outside him if he had passed the ball. He didn't see him, he took his shot from his left-hand side. He was under a bit of pressure to send it wide. So there can't be too much left in this first half. Indeed there isn't. Limerick started better, looked sharper, built up a decent lead. Cork showed character and resolve and clawed their way back in. And a goal three minutes from the break by Alan Brown put them in front for the first time. And so here in our live match at Porky Queen this afternoon in the first round of the Munster, it's Cork who take a one-point lead to the break. Cork won five, Limerick seven points. Well, with me is Liam Lenahan, one of the selectors for Limerick. It is windy down here, Liam. Did you expect to be ahead with the against the wind, in fact? We didn't expect to be ahead, no, but... Uh, uh, maybe you should be. Maybe we should be. We missed a few chances there, but... Um, uh, I'm very happy with the way the team are playing. It's real championship fair, so it'll be a helpful leather again in the second half, Tony. Loss of Damien quickly there just before the end. Damien is a huge loss, I think. His thumb is broken, but uh, we, the strength of this Limerick team is in the reserves, and TJ Ryan is a fine order as well. Do you think the score you put up in that first half will be enough, then you've got, got that wind in the second half? I think with the wind, and if we can keep playing as good as we are playing, we should just about shade it in the end. It'll be okay. very close, Tony. Thanks very much indeed. We'll let you go back. That's it from the sideline for the moment.